teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Again, notice that phrase, I am with you. How long? Always. I just want to say to you this morning, no, never alone. No, never alone. Uh, all I want you to understand today, and I'll take my seat, is that as a child of God, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how many ill winds are blowing in your life. You have the promise of God that you are never alone. Now that promise doesn't mean very much when it comes from human lips but when you have the promise from the Lord you have to remember what uh, Balaam says there in numbers God is not a man that he should lie not the son of man that he should repent because if God said it he is going to bring it to pass. It doesn't matter how hopeless it seems, how impossible it seems. God cannot lie. Let me tell you something. Satan hates me. He despises me. He does everything he can to undermine me and turn my life down and so he will with you. You're in me. The devil walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But there's only so far he can go with me. There's only so near he can touch me. There's only so much he can do to me. Because he realizes as he gets nearer and closer to me, he may not understand what the new birth is, but he can only touch me if God allows him to touch me. And I have been lifted up. I have been blessed. I reside in a place that he can never enter in. My citizenship is in heaven. My walk is in glory. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. I have been sealed by the Holy Spirit of God till the day of redemption. I am His and He is mine. That, my friend, is a big deal to me. I have been blessed, not will be, have been. That's my heritage of the Lord. For he that hath begun a good work in me, he will perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. Every weapon formed against me, he will bring to naught. If they build a structure, he'll tear it down. If they dig a moat, he'll put a bridge across it. If they build a fire, he'll put it out. He's my God. And I'm his child. I have been blessed. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 31. You should encourage yourself in the Lord by this simple statement. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, who can be against us? Answer that question and you'll find the key to your life. Is God for you or is he against you? The Bible said if God be for me, it doesn't matter who's against me. It doesn't matter what curse has been brought, tried to be brought down upon me. It doesn't make any difference what Satan tries to do to me. If God be for me, who can be against me? Can tribulation? No. Can death? No. Can sickness? No. Can lying? No. Can trouble? No. Can people? No. Can the problems of this world? No. Then what preacher can bring you down? Nothing can bring you down if you'll stand on that rock today stand on the solid rock today not the shifting sand of religion 
not the shifting sand of how you feel not the shifting sand of what people say about you not the shifting sand of church membership not the shifting sand of experience but stand upon the solid rock of the Lord Jesus Christ anchor your soul in him stand on his word stand on his promise stand on his name stand on him and you'll never fall amen yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me now the phrase I want you to repeat is simply this for thou art with me when thou passest through the waters I will be with thee and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire thou shalt not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon thee again I just want you to look at that um, phrase in verse 2 I will be with thee the Bible says in 1st Samuel chapter number 30 and verse number 6 that David encouraged himself in Jehovah his God in the Lord is God he in encouraged himself. In plainer words, he turned to the Lord and said, Lord, regardless of the circumstances around me, I know you're still the Lord. Regardless of the circumstances around me, I know you still love me. Regardless of the circumstances around me, I know there's something going on greater than I can understand before my eyes this day. In plainer words, I'm going to put my trust in you even if I can't figure out what's happening at this very present moment. So he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He gave God credit for being bigger than him. He gave God credit for knowing more than he knew. He gave God credit for being almighty God and not a man. Therefore he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. We have every reason in this house this morning to encourage ourselves in the Lord our God. There's every reason in the, in the world why we should encourage ourselves in God today. Let me give you one. Romans chapter number 4 and verse 7, the Bible says, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Colossians 2.13 says, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. That ought to be a reason to shout all over this house today because your sins have been forgiven. He'll never drag them up in front of you, beat you over the head with them. He'll never run around and blackguard you to somebody else. If your sins are forgiven, they're forgotten and they're paid for. I'll tell you right now, the slate was wiped clean in 1973. Has yours been wiped clean? Or did you walk into this house today with a burden of sin? You know you're wallowing in it, living in it, eating it, drinking it, sleeping it, and it's all what you're about is about sin but the greatest day in your life will be the day when it's all forgiven when that load is lifted that no man can carry the sin is the kind of load that'll drive you down to an early grave sin is the kind of load that'll take your health away from you sin is the kind of a load that'll bust your family up it'll take your sanity away from you because their sins are too great for them to bear but mine have been forgiven Hallelujah to God. Blessed is the man whose sins have been forgiven. How many of them, preacher? Every last one of them. Amen. There is no slate any cleaner than my slate. Your slate may be as clean, but it's not any cleaner. He wiped it clean by the blood of Christ and forgave me every last one of my sins. High is it? How can you? How can you walk into the house of God and have boldness before the Lord and assurance and confidence that you can come into His presence? It's because your sins are forgiven and you know they are. Not intellectually, not mentally, not theoretically, but real, really a personal realization, an experiential thing when you know the burden has been lifted and your sins are gone. The Bible said in 1 John chapter number 2 and verse 12, I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. 
What does that mean, preacher? That means that any time a guilty sinner will come before the Lord God Almighty, convicted of the power of the Holy Spirit, and convict that sin, the very character of God Himself demands that He forgive them on based upon His promise in His Word that if you will confess it and forsake it, He will forgive you of your sins. Remember that. But when you have the promise from the Lord, you have to remember what uh, Balaam says there in Numbers. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Because if God said it, he is going to bring it to pass. It doesn't matter how hopeless it seems, how impossible it seems, God cannot lie. And it doesn't matter what you are in. This is a day when it seems as though everybody uh, takes the position as though, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, cast aside and what I'm going through, I'm going through it by myself and nobody cares. And, and uh, so many folk today, they're living frustrated lives, rich folk that are lonely. The young folk who have hardly gotten started in life and yet they feel pressures upon them and their pressures cause them to believe that nobody knows and nobody cares but I'm here to tell you that it does not matter what you are in what you are going through no matter how many human ears have been closed how many human backs have been turned whatever you are going through if you belong to him I just wish you tell somebody no you are never alone oh hallelujah if we remember that in the house of God the platform upon which we must always stand is the platform of the Word of God heaven and earth shall pass away but the Lord said not one jot a tittle not even the smallest letter in the alphabet is going to pass away until my word be fulfilled and it does not matter what this world thinks it's what God says that will count in the end Jesus said you don't have to worry friends may turn their back on you but I'll be with you hallelujah your family might put you out but Jesus declares I'll be with you whatever you are going through if you belong to him you are never alone